Today we're gonna learn how to shape the light using the amazing power of adjustment brushes in Lightroom. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we jump into the video, special thanks to Derek Beljack from Edinburgh, Scotland for this amazing photo. He's a really good photographer, you can check more of his work right here. So here we are in Lightroom and let me show you the before and after. So this is the before as you can see and this is the after. As you can make out very easily, a lot of local adjustments have been applied. Now what is local adjustments? Local adjustments are the adjustments that we apply to particular areas that we determine. Suppose you want to brighten the sun, you would select that area and increase maybe the highlights, right? Suppose you want to darken the clouds, you will select that area and decrease the highlights or maybe the exposure, right? So those are local adjustments. Now what is global adjustments? Global adjustments are the adjustments that you apply all throughout the image. It applies in all areas of the photo. So if I go ahead and increase the exposure, have a look. It increases all throughout the photo. It's not local, it's global. Okay, so let's set it back and let's start from scratch, right? So let's click on reset or click on reset here. I, by the way, I've saved both of them as snapshots. If you want to know more about snapshots, check out the video right here. So let's reset that, click on reset and everything goes back to the starting point. Now there are a lot of workflows online. A lot of experts will tell you, you need to first set the white balance and then maybe the exposure. Someone says go in a line. Somebody says, okay, you need to set the white and the blacks first and then the exposure and then the white balance. A lot of steps, a lot of combinations. But let me tell you something, I'm not saying they're wrong. They are so very right. They're amazing experts, experts of Lightroom. But let me make a point here. Photography is an art and so is image processing. And you are the artist. You need to decide how to use the tool. Some ways might work for you, for example, setting the white balance first and then the exposure. Some ways might not work for you, for example, setting the whites and the blacks first and then the exposure. Do not follow anybody. Do not follow me for that matter, right? Listen to everyone and follow what you feel right. You are the artist, you need to decide how to use the tool. So let's get started, right? And this is not the right way. And this is also not the wrong way. This is my personal way, okay? Your way might be different. So first off, as you can see in this image, it's a lot more bluish. So I would go ahead and increase the temperature to maybe say 5.8, that looks right. We need more details in the clouds, so what do we do? Decrease the highlights, fine, that looks good. And beware, sometimes when you decrease the highlights, there's an edge glow that you need to be careful of, right? So you need to keep a check. Don't decrease it so much that the edge glows show up. In this example, luckily we don't see them, so that's fine. Let's zoom out a little bit. That looks great. Now let's go ahead and increase the shadows a little bit. That looks fine. Now let's increase the overall exposure. Maybe uh, 0 0.65 is good, right? And then set the whites and the blacks automatically. How to do that? Hold the shift key, just double click on the whites. This sets the whites and shift key, hold it, double click on the blacks that sets the blacks automatically. What that is doing is that it's expanding the dynamic range, making the brightest pixel totally white and making the darkest pixel totally dark so that the whole of the dynamic range is used. Now let's go ahead and play with the clarity. Now when you play with the clarity, make sure to zoom in, okay? Maybe one is to one is fine. You can also go one is to three or one is to two and then increase the clarity because when you increase the clarity so much, it introduces edge glows. So you don't want the edge close to be there, okay? So for example, if this is too much, you see the edge close, right? So you need to keep that in control. Let's zoom out a little bit, let's see how that looks. Clarity looks good on this. This is unusual, but it's looking good on this. Let's not go too much, let's go 50-ish. That looks good, right? And make sure there are no edge glows because if there are, that's gonna create problems. See, there are little edge glows right here. So we need to not increase it so much. Maybe 40 or 35 is fine. Let's keep it 35, not too much right now. We can always apply that selectively, right? Clarity is fine. I won't increase the vibrance right now because if I do, later it becomes so much saturated. I will save it for later. And you can do it right now. It's totally upon you. You are the artist again. Okay, let's get back to the tone curve. Let's get to the tone curve and play with the values. Highlights, a little bit, lights. That looks great. Don't worry about the uh, blown out sky. We can take care of that later. Okay, darks, 
shadows a little bit of down okay now that looks good now you can always go ahead and press J if you press J it will show you which are the areas that are so bright that it's losing details and which are the areas which are so dark that is also losing details so blue are the areas which are so very dark that they have no details and red are the areas which are so bright that they don't have any details those areas are clipping okay so let's decrease the shadows not too much as you can see we are losing details here we can take care of that we will take care of that locally minus let's say 40 ish is fine let's look at the before and after look at the before and after press the backward slash key so this is the before this is the after. Now let's get to the hue saturation and lightness tab. And as you can see, there's too much blue in this. So we need to decrease the saturation of the same. So let's click on saturation. And instead of playing with the blues, what we can do, we can click on this icon and just click on the blues and drag it down to decrease the saturation. That looks perfect. Now, if you want to increase the saturation of this orange tint greenish color, so let's go ahead and increase this. But as you can see, this is going very orangish. We need to make it a little greenish. So how to do that? Come back to hues. Just click on the hues and then with the same tool, targeted adjustment tool, click and drag it up or down. See which one works for you. If I drag it up, it's becoming greenish. That's looking great. And you can also play with the luminance. Click on luminance and maybe you want to darken the clouds. So click and drag it down just a little bit. And that looks wonderful, right? Doesn't it? Now, once you're ready with all of this, you can also sharpen it, but we'll do that later. Now it's time for us to shape the light and get amazing details out of the sky. And to do that, we need to adjust things locally, right? Press the letter K, which is the shortcut for adjustment brush, or you can select the adjustment brush right here. You're going to press K. And now let's take care of these two areas, which are clipping. So for this area, let's increase the shadows right increase the shadows bring the highlights to zero and by the way you can just double click on the effect to bring everything to zero and then you can go ahead and increase the shadows and just paint once it's all right now increase the exposure just a little bit maybe 0 0.2 works that's fine and create a new brush don't paint here again before that click on new we need to create a new point otherwise the same effects will be applied here we don't want that to happen click once and this time, decrease the highlights, shadows to zero, and maybe decrease the exposure just a little bit. That's fine. Now, let's bring out the colors in the photo using white balance. Click on new. And this time, with the brush, bring everything to zero, double click on the effects, and then just increase the temperature just a little bit and paint in this area. Just like that. Isn't that looking wonderful? Now you can also add some more white balance effects by creating a new brush. By the way, let's just go ahead and play with this. That's looking great. Maybe decrease the highlights a little bit and then create a new one. And this time take the temperature to the left and paint it at the top. Maybe take it to the left even more, not too much and play with the clarity just a little bit. That's fine. Now let's create a new brush to get more details out of the sky, right? And this time, what do we do? We decrease the highlights all the way to minus 100 and then paint on this area. Let's see what it does to the photo. See, it brings out amazing details, right? Paint a little extra. There we go. Maybe you can also try decreasing the exposure just a little bit, okay? Not too much, minus 0 0.2. Let's see how that works. That works fantastic. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after, right? So let us compare it. Let's save it as a snapshot, maybe vibrant to, let us compare it. So this is the one that we have we had done before, and this is the one that we are working on right now. Now in this white balance one, let's select this one. This one was not for white balance. I think this was one. And let's increase the tint a little bit to make it a little more magenta-ish. That's looking fine. And maybe we can delete this. This was useless. Okay, that looks great. Now it's time for us to add the clarity adjustment. Okay, so to do that, click on new, make sure new is checked, double click on the effects, increase the clarity just a little bit and paint on certain areas. Not all the areas, just certain areas. And by the way, you need to make sure that the flow and the feather is 100%. And you can change the values if you want. 
For example, if the flow is say 10%, you need to paint 10 times to get 100% opacity. If the flow is 100%, you need to paint just once to get 100% opacity. I hope that, that's just an example. I hope that clears things for you. Okay, so just add some clarity to particular areas. That looks fantastic. And beware of the edges. If you zoom in, let's go ahead and zoom in. And by the way, to shortcut the shortcut to zoom in, hold the space bar, your cursor changes to a magnifying glass, and then just zoom in. And if you apply clarity right here, it will give some edge glows. So beware of that. Let's apply some clarity right here. And maybe try increasing the clarity a bit. That looks fantastic. Okay, that looks nice. Okay, now maybe try increasing the shadows. No, 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 doesn't look good. So you need to play with the values and see which one looks good for you. Now, supposing the sun is here, we need to create a fake sun. Let's create a fake sun, click on new. And for this new, increase the exposure just a little bit and just dab once right here, okay? And you can move it if you like it. So, and increase the temperature maybe, creating a fake sun effect. Let's press J to get rid of those red things and you can always press H to hide these points, these pins of the brush. So H, let's see how that looks. That looks fantastic. Now it's time for us to shape the lights in the mountain. So let's click on new again and we can actually double click on the effects, increase the exposure to say 0 0.5 and maybe increase the temperature and just click once. And maybe you can also decrease the flow that gives you much more room to paint a couple of times to get the effect that you desire. Just paint a couple more times. Here, here. I'm gonna increase the flow to make it fast. You can take the time. Paint on the bright areas, there we go. Paint on this area, that looks great. Paint here. Maybe give the water a little shine right there. That looks great. Maybe give it a shine right here. That looks awesome. Okay, and maybe shine on the rock. It's amazing. Now here's the problem. It's going out of the edges. We need to delete that. So let's zoom in, hold the space bar. Plus, let's see, it's extending. So let's go one is to four. And then hold the Alt key or the Option key if you're using a Mac. The cursor changes to a minus and then just paint over these areas. Just get it away from the edges. And make sure while you're doing that, the flow is at 100, right? Once they're out of the edges, now you can also go ahead and play with the values and maybe increase the clarity a little bit of these areas and decrease the exposure. It's too much, I guess, 0 0.5. Okay, now let's have a look at the before and after. And before we do that, I think it's a little extra right here. So we need to delete that. Okay, that's fine. And decrease the exposure just a little bit. That's fine. Now increase the clarity a bit. Yeah, that looks good. Now you can, you can also increase the tint if you want. Yeah, that looks fantastic, doesn't it? Now, you can create one more brush. You can create as many brush as you want. So let's create one more brush. And for the sky, I need to do something with it, I know. You can always just double click on the effects and just paint on this area. And by the way, you can always press O to switch on and off the overlay. So this is the area that you're painting, the red area. Press O again to hide it. I can try decreasing the exposure. This is too much. Well, maybe the highlights again and increasing the clarity might help. Now you can create a new brush, but just for the skies, for the complete sky, increase the clarity. You can work on the whole sky with the clarity, stay away from the edges. Yep, and that looks good. Now to give it a finishing touch, let's first click on the brush again to let go of it. Let's come down to split toning, right? And let's give it an orange-ish highlight. So let's increase the hue to around orange-ish and then increase the saturation. It's a little greenish. So let's play it till it gets orange-ish. Wow, that looks wonderful. Decrease the saturation. Yeah. And you can also give something to the shadows, maybe a little blue color if you want. But I'm okay with this. This is looking wonderful. Now, once you're satisfied with this, at the end, to finish it all up, add more drama, just go ahead and increase this magic slider called contrast. Whoa, that looks wonderful, doesn't it? Now, as you can see, these areas have gone very dark, right? These areas. You need to take the brush, increase the exposure just a little bit. It takes a little time and paint on this area. Let me show you how to do that. 
okay we actually missed this area so you can take the brush double click on the effect increase the exposure to maybe 0 0.2 ish and then just paint over this area and that works pretty good or maybe just increase the shadows and delete the outside areas that works fine you can do the same for this that takes time and then to finish it all up again what you can do let's just click on the brush again to let go of it again what you can do you can come down to post crop vignetting this one under effects and decrease the amount just a little bit and there you have it it's all ready now let me give you a tip when it comes to adding vignettes what you can do, you can in decrease the amount all the way to minus 100 and then decrease the feather and then choose the midpoint that you want. Maybe you want this much vignetting and then increase the feather a little bit and then increase the amount, how much you want, right? Isn't that wonderful? I don't want so much of an amount and maybe I'll just decrease the, increase the midpoint. That looks great. And now this completes the image. Now in this point, at this point, if you think it's too much saturated, what you can do, you can go up and then decrease the vibrance and that's why I told you not to increase the vibrance in the beginning. So you can decrease the saturation or the vibrance. Vibrance controls the color of just the midtones and saturation controls the color of every pixel, right? So let's try decreasing saturation just a little bit. Nope, maybe decreasing the vibrance will help. Yes, yes. Maybe to minus 12. That looks great. If you think the saturation is too much right here, you can take the brush, paint right there just a little bit, and then decrease the saturation. And as you can see, the exposure is a little higher. You can just double click on the exposure to bring it to zero. That looks great, doesn't it? Right? Now you can go ahead and create a new snapshot or update the current snapshot with the current settings. Here's how to do it. So Vibrant 2 was the one, right click on it, update with current settings. So it's all ready. So let's have a look what I had done before and let's compare it to this one. So this one was the one I took some more extra time and did it. It's a little more mild. It's a little more extreme. You can just play with the values whatever you like. And maybe at this point, I might play with the white balance. Just click on this and maybe make it a little more magenta-ish and a little less yellowish. Wow. That looks wonderful, doesn't it? So that's all for this video. And just remember to shape the light, just keep in mind the direction of light. In this example, the light was coming from the left. Light is shining on these areas. This is a dark area. This is dark area. Don't paint on those areas. Just paint on the bright areas. Increase the exposure just a little bit. If you want to add more dimensions, paint on the dark areas. Decrease the exposure just a little bit. As simple as that. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.